Hi, I'm Dr. Rob Mathia. I teach in Azusa Pacific Seminary. I'm a professor of practical theology. And several of my colleagues and I put on a webinar a couple days ago entitled Theological Reflections on COVID-19. And unfortunately, that didn't record. And so we've been asked to recreate our little intro presentations. So I wanted to share with you some of my thoughts on just one aspect of COVID-19. And it starts with... Um, a, uh, an online show I watched. I watched uh, an episode of The Tiger King last week because I hear everybody else is doing that. I thought I should know something about what everybody's doing during this stay-at-home season. And so on in this one episode during one of the interviews, there's a woman who runs this tiger park and she was talking about some tragedies that had happened in her life. And then she said this. She said, everything happens for a reason. And I noticed it because I've been struck over the years by how that phrase has taken root in Christian circles. And I think it's worth paying attention to as we think about who God is and what God is doing um, in light of the coronavirus. When I hear Christians say this, everything happens for a reason, usually the implication is that everything happens because God wants it to happen. And I have a little bit different theology than that. This is really a question about God's sovereignty. What does it mean for us as Christians to say that God is sovereign? What does it mean that everything happens? Uh, what does it mean to say that everything happens is what God intends to happen? Uh, that's, a, that's a big question and, and um, lots of different perspectives on it. But I want to offer some of, some of my own. When I read scripture and think about God's sovereignty, the fundamental meaning for me is that in the end, God makes everything turn out. That is, in the end, Christ will come again. And to quote from Revelation 21, he will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away. Our sovereign God will bring about these circumstances. So that's kind of my first framework for thinking about God's sovereignty. I don't think that that means that God causes everything to happen in the here and now that happens in the world, though. There's lots of evil things that happen. There are lots of simply, simply circumstances that happen, evil or not evil, that I, I don't think we should be attributing to God. And Scripture is full of examples of things that happened that God didn't want to happen, beginning with Adam and Eve in the garden. God didn't want them to eat from, uh, from the tree, but they chose to. So does everything happen for a reason? Well, yeah, there was a reason. The reason was they made choices. So, so I'm not able to, I don't want to blame God for that. Um, right now, as I'm recording this, we're in Holy Week, and I think of of Jesus being betrayed by Judas. And was there a reason that happened? Well, yeah, there was a reason. Judas was, was greedy. Judas made a choice. It didn't happen because God made that happen. So when I think about this in relation to COVID-19, um, does everything happen for a reason? Well, there are reasons that COVID-19 uh, spread. There are ways that viruses mutate and spread. We live in an age when people travel extensively internationally. That's another reason it spread. So along those lines, yes, there are reasons, but I, I'm not comfortable theologically attributing the cause, uh, those reasons, to God. So when I hear someone say everything happens for a reason, within Christian contexts specifically, I think it's usually intended as a way of providing comfort in the midst of something difficult. It's a way of expressing faith even, and, and I appreciate that and, and respect that. Uh, it can be a way of in, inquiring, uh, providing encouragement. So if we take that away, if we say uh, that, uh, you know, if we take away that saying and the underlying theology as a source of comfort and hope, Hope. What are we left with? Where do we turn for comfort and hope during these anxious times? I would suggest that our comfort and hope come not from the idea 
that God is the cause of everything that happens, but from the faith that God is with us in the midst of everything that happens. The God who was with Jesus on the way to the cross, the God who was with Jesus on the cross, is with us in the midst of our suffering as well. And so my prayer is that we may know experientially God's presence with us during this season. Um, when I look for comfort and hope, I see that coming from God's bodily presence with us. What do I mean by God's bodily presence? The church is the body of Christ. So the church is God's bodily presence today. And so I see the church being with people in lots of ways, just one little way. My own church, the leadership team divided up the, the phone list of our members and, and is calling every single person to check in, to listen, to see if there are needs, to pray. Um, in the midst of this time of being the body of Christ, I want to challenge the church to do the things the church has always done. The church has always been at the forefront of caring for the sick. What does that mean concretely today? Well, you have to figure that out in your own context, but may our hearts be oriented in that direction. What does it look like to care for the sick? Um, in some ways, that might be staying uh, quarantined. In other ways, it may be jumping in and, and engaging and volunteering or using your professional skills. Uh, the other thing that the church has always done is it has always looked out for the voices of the vulnerable listen for the voices of the vulnerable, spoken on their behalf. So who is on the margins in this crisis? Who's not being cared for or listened to or, or attended to? And the church needs to pay attention to that and, and speak out for those folks. So um, I would just want to pray that all of us would be filled with the Holy Spirit during these times to continue living into God's ways, to continue living together, as the body of Christ and to be God's bodily presence. May that be a part of God's comfort and encouragement to us during this time. I don't know why certain things happen today, and, and I'm okay with that. I don't feel the need to sort all of that out. But on the other hand, I'm convinced that some things happen for which God is not responsible. But I still believe that in the end, God will see things turn out the way God intends them to. The day will come when there will be no more sickness, no more suffering, and no more death. The day will come when the fullness of God's kingdom will be with us. So this is just one aspect of how the church might uh, reflect theologically during these days of coronavirus. But I hope you find some encouragement and hope in it and in God's presence with us during this season.